uh, I turned the camera uh -huh. sideways. The right. whole thing was sideways. So I'm not doing that now. I'm going to do it this way. You know, it was a new phone. I figured the new phone knows how to do what the old phone does, but I guess it doesn't. Okay? It didn't know. If I rotated it, it said, you know, whatever. We're going. We're rolling. Okay? Testing, one, two, three. Okay, we're on a completely new area. This is gonna be really exciting. I'm very excited to be sharing and going over some of this material with you, but first I just gotta give you some heads up on announcements. Um, uh, this Sunday, I'm also gonna be starting a new class series called Gates of Reincarnation, where I actually have, where Rabbi Wolby is getting copies for the first 11 chapters that my father-in-law, Zechus Yegen Elena, his memory, his, May he protect us, his merit protect us. Uh, he commentated on the first 11 chapters, so we're gonna be doing that. It's gonna be a study, okay? So we're gonna have to have your heads involved. Sunday night, I'm gonna be doing a med Jewish meditation class here at the center, 7.30. It's only gonna be once a month, okay? Because I have an addiction to my family. I like to spend time with my family. So I can't like every single Sunday night and Sunday morning you know, so, uh, but, um, but I want to share and do this with Sunday people. Sunday night is the Astros, so a lot of people... I'm competing with the Astros. We'll meditate on the Astros. I will come. That's okay. You can always watch the game later and catch the action. All right, it doesn't matter. I'm starting anyway, so uh, whoever comes, comes. But it's uh, unbelievable explorations into, uh, into Jewish meditation, a lost art that has uh, faded out. But this actually is gonna be kind of like a prelude to it. This is actually really a dynamic safer. This is from, uh, the, called the Gates of Light, or Share Aura, okay? Gates of Light, written by uh, Rabbi uh, Yosef Gikatia, or Gikatila, some people pronounce it, okay? Uh, or, or as my father-in-law, Gikatalia, okay? In any case, um, he predates the Aris, all of the, who was in the 16th century, I believe, and I don't know exactly when he came out with this book. Sorry, I don't do my uh, enough of my what we call it uh, history um, research in terms of uh, exactly the, about the author. But he was definitely uh, predating one of the early ones, the early authors in terms of the Kabbalistic wisdom along with um, of in, in Spain and in the, the 12th century, okay? So here, this book, he brings, he's going to list, as we see right here, just cut to the chase here, you see this, pi pi this picture in front of you. Mm -hmm. So this picture actually is really the array of the 10 spherot that we have. Mm -hmm. Here, for those of you who are online, if you can ever get a copy of this, or maybe you can email me, okay? You can email me and I can send you a copy of this piece of paper. You can also find it in the book of Meditation and Kabbalah by Rabbi Arya Kaplan, uh, a blessed memory who wrote this, came up with this uh, scheme because it's not in the English translation. I also don't know really much about the English translation. That's why I'm saying don't go buy this book. Somebody borrowed this book from me a couple months ago, and I'm like, you're not going to be able to decipher it. And he agreed with me, yes, I need this. Okay, because they write differently in that time. Okay, and it's very associative thinking, as you're going to see. We're going to do little excerpts of it, because we're getting, entering in an investigation which answers a lot of questions. One of the main questions that we have is, you see these ten sphere out. And unfortunately, uh, yes, it does have the transliteration of the names of God, 10 major names of God that we have. And we find some are used at certain places, some are used at different places, okay? Why do they use this name? Why is this time is used this? Why is this used then, okay? So they're specific names for specific expressions, okay, of the divine energy or the divine garments which God behaves with the world, okay? As we know that the ten spherot, which are the, called, I guess you call them the ten illuminations, and the ten illuminations, we say are like garments or God's guiding forces, how he expresses himself in the world. 
We look at the ten spherot also as the spiritual DNA of creation. That every single thing, really, inside of everything, is comprised of these ten spherot. We say that the ten spherot are the bridge between us and in terms of our connection to the divine. In other words, how do we connect to the Ain Sof, to the unlimited light? We do it through these ten spherot. Okay? They are the bridge and the way we can connect. Okay? Otherwise, it would be very hard to use us who are limited, and then there's the Ain Sof, which is completely unlimited. So, interestingly enough, as you'll see in this picture here, you'll have the numbers here on the top of this, each one of these spherot, of these circles. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the interesting thing is, he starts off this book not with number one. He starts off with number ten. And he goes up to number one. Okay? And we're going to find out why. I just want to give you some things that why is this so important and why did he write it? Okay? It's a David Letterman thing. Why? What do you mean? Well, he does his top ten list. Oh, the top ten! We got the top ten names! Here we go. Bing! Okay, so the idea really here is we're going to see something really amazing, a text here that I know you're going to, uh, it's going to definitely wake you up, okay? Hopefully we'll get to it before 1.30, Howard, okay? <laughs> but basically, we would all like to have our prayers answered, wouldn't, wouldn't that? We would like to have our prayers answered at a, at a, at a, at a nice time. Okay, we can't say immediately or now. The good time. We would like our prayers to be answered. We'd like to know that our prayers are answered. And the amazing thing he says is the key to having your prayers answered is to know God's names. You have to know which name to address. And then you'll have access and then your prayers will be answered. Okay? Yes. And he gives an amazing uh, imagery that we're going to see very soon, okay? Now, we cannot have to understand, we have to understand something very important. And he uh, iterates this in the introduction, is that you cannot use the names for personal matters. We have a phrase, don't use the crown. You cannot take the king's crown and use it for your personal things. And this is a huge thing that helps us in terms of always having to align our intentions. When we, well, I'm, what, do, what do I mean by intentions, okay? You have to go into your deepest will. And the deepest will inside of us, of course, has to be, have pure intentions. We don't, let's say, let's say, you know, let's, a crude example, God, I want money, okay? Why do you want money, okay? <laughs> Because I want to buy a new car. Why do you want to buy a new car? So I can look good in front of people. We have to say, that's not such a good reason, right? Why would you want to look good in front of people for? Why is that important to you? You know, when we pray a lot of times, and one of the main keys of prayer is always you have to really have clear the why. I want this, why do you want it? The why is the big motivator, always. Okay, most people want a car because uh, so I can drive around when I want to with comfort and ease. Okay, why do I want to drive around with comfort and ease, right? Right, well, so I can have more energy to serve you, to, so I can dedicate my time and, uh, and focus to more spiritual matters. That's a nice intention, okay? Or maybe some people will say, well, I want the freedom. So really, in a deeper sense, really what you want is the feelings of freedom. I want more money, so I want to feel, I want freedom. Really what you want is the feelings of freedom. Money is just a vehicle to give you those, right? The why always gets into the intention. So when we approach God's names, and we're going to go ahead and, and use them for a meditation, as he helps us to do, is the intention always has to be, right? For the sake of elevating humanity, for the sake of either to get us out of trouble, a lot of times, Right? The sages are not really loud, and we have very many um, instances right, uh, where there were big, great sages who used God's names, 
And even though they were using it for a holy purpose, they were punished. Rabbi Hanania ben Teradion was one of them. He used it for a holy purpose, but still it, got, it, it, it had a backlash to it. And he suffered a, a tragic death because of it. Okay, so we're warned very emphatically, like the name of God, first of all, you're not allowed to say the name of God, Yud Kei Vav Kei, as it is written out, right? Hebrew is a phonetic language. Yud Kei Vav Kei spells certain sounds. Yud has a Y sound, He has a He sound, but yet we don't pronounce it like that, right? We say Ado, we use the word Adonoi when we say God's name. We don't say it like the way it's written. We're not allowed for the reason of we don't have the real tradition on how it is pronounced. And, and we're not the calling adult. And we're not on the high level. We're not a vessel where we can use it in its proper way and it would incur spiritual damage. Those witnesses down the street or up the street or wherever they are knocking on your door. Hey, we want to talk to you about something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Those witnesses, you know, they 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 don't know how to pronounce it. Okay? They think they do and everybody else thinks they do and they studied books and all that, 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 uh, uh, uh. and we're going to see. Okay? So, so the essence of God we really cannot know. And what we're looking at and when we look at the array of the ten spherot, is the tree. It's called the tree. You know, if you ever want to know what the tree of life looks like, this is the tree of life. Okay? The tree of life has to be watered. You have to water trees. Okay? And we're going to get to that. Okay? So we have many names of God. You see ten here. And these are not the top ten, by the way. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, David Letterman. Okay? They're not the top ten. There are many names of God that we're going to go into. We're, we're going, like I say, we're going to plan on doing this, okay? I'm going to do, we're going to do just excerpts just to get a taste, a little flavor, to get a freak wet a little bit. And then, God willing, I'm going to take you to the 12 permutations of Yud, Kei, Vav, Kei. Now, the 12 permutations of the name of God, which is Yud, Kei, Vav, Kei, is really cycled for the year. Every month, there's a certain permutation. We'll get to it. 12 permutations of the name of God. That's another thing we're going to do. Okay, that brings down from the Book of Formation, Sefer Yetzirah. And then we're also going to get into the 72 letter name of God. Okay? Okay, and then we're going to get into, uh, actually, the 72 names of God. 72 name, right? And then there's the 42 letter name of God, which you have, might have heard of before. I gave a class on it. A little brief class on the Anabakoach. Very important. Very important, the 42 letter name of God, right? There's a 12 letter name of God. There's different names. And the different names are for different expressions. And we say, why are the different names? We're going to discover. And what you can do in terms of it, that it's in terms of its practical approach. Okay? Okay? So, um, the real idea here is that we say every single day, is the blessings of the Torah. In the second blessing of the Torah, because we have to bless it, we got the Torah every day. We say, thank you, God, for commanding us to be busy in Torah. And the next blessing that we say on the Torah is, right? Please, Hashem, make the words of the Torah be pleasant in my mouth. And in the mouths of all of Israel and the descendants of all Israel, Right? But sets Ainu, but sets A, sets Ainu, but sets A, call Amcha Bezrael Kulanu, may all of us, we make a prayer, Yode Shamecha, know your name, Vlomde Torah Techa Lishma, and be able to learn your Torah with the right intentions when we study Torah. But the first thing is in that little phrase is, may we all know your name. The idea here is not just to be able to look at a name, say it, but to know it. It's deep. It has to be a deep, internalized relationship. Okay? So, there are, there are besides this, we're going to see that there are many nicknames to God that we've already discovered that we were learning in the previous classes, the 13 attributes of mercy. Rahum v'chanun, right? Erech God has also these names, and he has many Nicknames, okay? Where's David, by the way? 
working. Earning a living. Oh, good for him. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the first rule is we're going to discover, we're going to, we're going to start with the names. And we're going to do a study on the names and then excerpt from this. Yes. Can I just add, we're probably going to be at your class tonight, by the way. Awesome. Okay. Great. Yes. Missouri City. All right, Garden of yeah, Amuna tonight, also Missouri City. Oh, we got colored pages. How nice. Okay, so so the idea, the first rule is always these are names, but they're never in terms of his essence. They are an expression. We cannot know the Ain Sof. We cannot know God in terms of his essence. It's always only an expression. It's a name. Okay, it is a revelation. It is an expression, but it's never God's essence. Okay, so with that, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Little introduction. So the first part of Shari Ora that we're going to see right now. And he brings a verse. These verses are very significant, by the way, that he brings in the, in the, uh, in the beginning. Because this verse, actually, that we see right now, says what? Adonai sefasai tiftach ufiagid tehilasecha. My master, open my lips and let my mouth declare your praise. Do you know when we say this? Does anybody know? Before the Amida, before the silent prayer in the Shemona Esrei. Mm -hmm. In other words, as we're taking three steps forward, and those three steps forward are really, we're entering into, right from the world of Asiya, we're going from Asiya to Yitzira, Yitzira to the world of, of Bria, and then to the world of Atsilut. Actually, that's why we take three steps forward. We're going into the multi-dimensions, and then we're in the presence of God himself. We must say this word first, okay? This word is the word that Avram Avinu is called God, okay? This is how he first referred to him. And as we're going to see, you can't get in the doors without this. You cannot. God has to even, even God opens our mouths, okay? So we start with this. The foundation of wisdom and the essence of the Kabbalah is belief in the blessed Lord, Yudke Vavke. If your thoughts will travel honestly on the way, okay? Baraglecha lotigof, and your feet will not stray, okay? Then you will not, then you will go your way safely and not injure your feet. In other words, when we approach God, we have to approach with the right attitude, right? Everything's a bad attitude. You ever have teenagers with attitude? <laughs> Never? It's just a reflection back to us when we had attitude. And do you think when God asks us or we want to approach God, you got to approach with the right attitude? Okay? Everything is attitude. Okay? The first of the holy names is the one called, and I don't not, I'm not going to pronounce it because I, I only pronounced it in the beginning a few minutes ago just to give you how it is pronounced, okay? But I'm going to refer to it as Adonut, okay? Because that's the kosher way to say it, okay? Adonut, okay? Adonut, which really means, and when we say the name of God, there are two things one has to stop and contemplate when you say any blessing anytime you're going to say God's name. Okay? And you're going to say, of course, you're going to pronounce it Adonut. That's the way you pronounce it. But of course, in your mind's eye, you have to envision Yud Kevavke. Okay? And there's going to be more about that in the meditation class. Of course, all you all are going to be in the Astros game, so I won't see you. Okay? <laughs> the name Adonut means we're supposed to have, you're supposed to think about. Adon Hakol, which means master over everything. That is the first meditative contemplation when you say this word. Okay? So it says, Be not over eager to go to the house of God. This verse warns one to inspect oneself and to be careful when one wishes to pray before God. One should see if one has detractors, quote-unquote, who keep one's prayer from being received. What does that mean, detractors? Besides the, the noise that's going on in the synagogue, if you're in a synagogue or whatever, okay? There's other detractors. One must clear the path and remove all the obstacles in the way. It is similar to a person who goes to the king's court and seeks advice. 
He must be careful and aware of whether there is danger on the way. He must also know how many gates the king's house has and the approaches to them, one inside the other. He must know and be beloved by each gatekeeper, right? And he must know and make peace with the one who wants to deter him, okay? So who are these deterrers, okay? Hmm, Yetzar Hara, Satan, we'll see. The accusers, right? They're, they, they could take the place, they could take the form as thoughts in our head, okay? And many times they do. Either it's the static that goes on in our head because we're so busy, we're so frazzled because of all the stuff that we have to do that we think about, or it could be just simply the voice inside us says, who are you to approach the omnipresent, okay? Or, you know, do you know what you, what you did yesterday? Are you thinking clearly? All kinds of voices pop up, okay? So here, a person has to be aware, okay, of these kinds of dangers, okay? Aside from all these considerations, he must also see how he is dressed, if his clothing is truly fit for the presence of a king, as is written. For one cannot enter the palace gate wearing sackcloth. That comes from Esther and Mordechai wearing sackcloth. He hang around by the gate, couldn't go in though. Right? They had to clean him up and if, if, when he wanted to they bring him to the king, as with anyone, Yosef also. Okay, they had to clean him up. Same way by us. You know, some people think they can daven to God, they can pray to God. Daven means pray one shirt out or whatever it is, you know. Sometimes you gotta have to, you know, if you were painting and all of a sudden it's sundown or whatever it is, you got to pray, whatever it is, okay? So a person has to make sure that he is also dressed in a, a respectful manner. As a matter of fact, there are laws about this. You can't have, if a person has certain smelly items that might be on his clothing, he should not approach the king, okay? Because the king would go, what's that smell? Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, okay? He must also consider, the next page, he must also consider if his manner of speaking befits the king or his officers and deputies. If there's one among them who will challenge his request, also if he must remain there for an extended period, period, he must know if he can stand it. Okay, sometimes the light gets so great. Okay, who are the officers and deputies? Okay, so we we're entering into the spiritual realm and in the spiritual realm there are entities. Okay, believe it or not, we have no idea what's going on around us right now in terms of the atmosphere, in terms of the entities that are existing all around us at every moment. Our sages aroused us with the rule, the kingdom of earth is the same as the kingdom of heaven. If a person must be careful for a king of flesh and blood, he should be even more concerned when he enters the portals of the king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he. For a man must be aware that if there are no open places from the earth to the heavens, every place is filled with legions and hordes. Some are full of mercy and loving kindness. Others beneath them are impure creatures who seek to detract and to do harm. Some are stationary and others fly in the air. There are, there, and there is no open space between heaven and earth because every place is crowded with them. Some are for peace and some are for war. Some warrant good and others evil. Some are for life and others death. This understanding is a subject of the Psalm of the Demons. Yes, there is a Psalm of Demons, okay? Psalm of Demons, actually, we say it every Saturday night, okay? Every Saturday night, we have this special Psalm, which basically chases away all of the external ones. We, they call it external ones, or chitzonim, okay? So the Psalm, it's Psalm 91, okay? And obviously what this just tells us here, and this is why also that we're also warned against seances, okay? You're not allowed to go ahead and contact the dead, okay? Simply because you don't know who is on the other line. <laughs> you don't know who is, okay? So, you know, they could be giving you any information and you really don't know who they are, okay? So... Just like uh, Rabbi Ariel Bartzada he gives the understanding, he gives like a great parable imagery. If you, and, and I have been, somebody drops you off in some foreign city, 
somewhere, who knows where, right? All of a sudden, right? And you don't speak the language, and you're walking around, you need to find some direction, right? If you can even find somebody remotely who speaks your language, and let's say you do, you really don't know who you're talking to, okay? And they go, come, come, I'll show you, right? Right? I'll show you where to go. Sure, well, come, come, come this way, follow me. And I have had these situations. And I've had no people who have these situations. So in other words, when you go into the spiritual realm, there are some who are friendly, who will help you, and some who are not. And you don't know. You really don't know. You're at their mercy. Just like a car mechanic. You're at their mercy. <laughs> well, your Johnson rod and your Fetzer valve, this will cost you about $550. Okay. Right? Or your air conditioner repairman. Okay. My neighbor just had a whole thing with an air conditioner. The guy wanted to charge him $16,000. New unit. You need new unit. Right? $16,000. Right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So... So in any case, there's no empty spaces. There are, in the spiritual realm, there's full of entities. So here you are, little you, are going to make a prayer. And that prayer has to travel through a lot of, you know, has to truth travel through some dimensions, okay? So here's how the, uh, the, the prayer goes. O oh, you who dwell in the shelter of the Most High and abide in the protection of Shekai, I will say of the Yudke Vavke, my refuge, my stronghold, and God whom I trust, that he will save you from the fowler's trap, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with the pinions. You will find refuge under his wings. His fidelity is an encircling shield. You need not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, the plague that starks in the darkness. Actually, really, the, 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 the Hebrew were here. He didn't do good. The Hebrew is Ketiv Mariri. Actually, they name, they, they actually name names of demons inside the psalm. Okay? And we say it on Saturday night. You have to say it standing, okay? It has to be said while standing after you do the silent prayer. And, and, uh, and that is what really forces away all of this. This psalm basically pushes all of the external forces, external motivations, all of that out of the inhabited area, okay? All of these entities mentioned are gangs who dwell gangs. Isn't that nice? We like, right? All these entities mentioned are gangs who dwell between heaven and earth. Thus, a person praying is just like someone traveling through perilous terrain. His prayer has to pass among these groups and then ascends to the heavens. If he is worthy, the robbers will not harm his prayers. And if he is not worthy, the destructive forces, by the way, will be numerous and formidable. Actually, they snatch his prayers, okay? Thus, King David, peace be upon him, initiated the Psalms to clear the way Interestingly enough, the Psalms are very deep. And that's really the point of this, the end point of this book is if you say Psalms and you get into the habit of saying Psalms, right? All of the names that you see here in the 10 Sefirot are all inside the Psalms intertwined in perfect spots, right? You're gonna hit it all, hit, you get to hit all these names in perfect, uh, perfect order, okay? So, but King David, peace be upon him, initiated the Psalms to clear the way so the prayers could ascend unimpeded, for all these forces are like a cloud, which prevents the ascension of prayer. And this is the meaning of the verse, you have screened yourself off with the cloud that no prayer may pass through. Okay? So, which means what? Really, I, there was a great story. There's a Baal Shem Tov, he alighted in one village, and he was going to the synagogue to pray in here. He's with his entourage, and he walks into the door, and he's like this. <laughs> And, and he couldn't get in. And he's like, it's, there's nothing there, Rebbe. What's going on? Why get... I can't get in, man. He keeps trying, you know? And they go, what's the deal? He says, well, all the people's prayers, because they said it by rote so many times, they never went anywhere. They stuck. The, pray, the atmosphere is so filled with these prayers that were, they, they never got to where they needed to go. So they're stuck in here. So yeah, I think he went on the roof and he did some kind of plumbing job, spiritual plumbing. <laughs> that they were all, you know, with a plunger or something. <laughs> Whatever it was, a spiritual plunger to go ahead and open up the, pie, the, the channels that these prayers can find. It goes, so then he can go in and then he can pray. But meanwhile, it was stuck. 
Okay? So, Thickness. Rabbi, I had a question. So if you had the proper intent and you were really concentrating, yes. you could still have that blockage? Is that what you're saying? Ah, now the next line. Oh. When David <laughs> peace be when David peace be with him came and created a psalm, it was for man who arranges the psalms in his prayers. Okay? He 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 had specifically in mind what these psalms do. Every time you're saying psalms, and if you can just even if you don't know what they mean. There's three books you could read uh, that you don't have to know what it says, but if you can say it in Hebrew or the transliteration, the, the energy of the letters has an amazing spiritual property to it. Okay? And this is how this is where it comes from. Right here, he's going to explain it right now. This is the source for it. Okay? But King David made the song. He could put together it, right? Thus dispersing the destructive, ruinous, and disruptive forces. See why the Psalms clear the path, okay? The Psalms are called Zmirot in Hebrew, okay? Zmirot means songs, okay? But it also, as it, from the root of Mizamer. Now, Mizamer means something else. And look what he says on the top of the page. He will trim away the twigs with, miz, with Mazmirot, which means pruning hooks. There's a, one of the forbidden malachot, one of the forbidden manners of work that a person is not allowed to do on Shabbat, one of the 39 big ones, is called pruning, which is called zamer. Okay, to zamer, to prune your tree, you're not allowed to do. Okay? So interesting now, good, two concepts that don't seem to stem, that don't seem to jive, and here he's going to put them together. Right? Zmirot, songs, pruning, Songs, pruning, how do we put these together, right? How, what is pruning, what does singing a song have to do with pruning? Oh, it's so deep, it's so deep. Because what it is, what, right? Is when you're doing, when you're saying the psalms, you're scattering, you're clearing the air, you're clearing the way. You're pruning the external forces. You're cutting away all of that, all of the stuff, the obstacles that block your prayer and block your access and block your relationship. It so opens up the, the channels. Was that the plunger? That's the plunger, okay? Okay, but he probably used some of the names in this book and he and opened up, okay? Because you might need a little extra, you know, snake plunger or, you know, roto-rooter. I don't know. You guys don't have roto-rooter here. So, Rabbi, does it mean then that that's really the only way that you can clear all of this junk out of the way is by saying the Psalms? Yes. Okay. Because now, right. we do say the Psalms in the morning, it's long. This Pesukit is Zimra yeah. that we say in the morning, yeah. right? Yeah. It can blast you and you can like, oh, no, nah. you guys, what's with you guys, right? You want to just like, you know, let's go get a hot dog, okay? So, you know, let's, you know, let's go take a break, you know, let me go get a, right? So, so there are ways that for people who are like us coming from our background where it's like too overwhelming and you can't say it with full concentration, there's the shortcuts, which was really, you say, the prayers of Baruch She'amar, which is the introductory, the first blessing. Ashrei, the most important. And then you say the conclusive one who is called Yishtabach. Starts with the word Yishtabach. Ashrei actually is said three times a day. And Ashrei we do say also before Mincha. It's a psalm you say before you pray. Okay, Mariv is a different story. But basically, even to say any psalm, any psalm, okay, will open up. It opens up the, okay, the atmosphere. It opens up the environment. It clears away. It prunes away. Adam Arishon was also, what was he in the garden to prune? He was pruning, right? What was it? wasn't, he's he actually to work the garden. He needed to, to take away the, 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 the external forces. He needed to take away all of the motivations that could cloud someone's pure intentions, okay? We all, in deep, deep, deep in our soul, we have pure intentions. But a lot of times it gets interfered with, right? Other motivations. You need to really clear them out and get solid. So Adam Arishan was brought into the garden to prune, to, to, to prune, to cut away all that externalness, right? In order that there can be a open, clear, and sincere relationship, okay? So it knocks away the externalities, we'll call it, okay? So that's what Zmiro, singing songs even after, after let's say, a Shabbos meal. Yeah. It's a custom to sing songs. Right. Also, besides helping to digest the food, okay? 
but also to clear away, it clears away anything external, it helps to connect, okay? So, so that's what Zemir wrote, it's a fascinating, an unbelievable idea, an unbelievable concept, okay? It is also written, your laws are a source of strength, Zemir wrote to me whenever I dwell. So it's also the idea of Zemirot is the idea or concept of source or source of strength. This means that it was those Zemiro, those Psalms that scattered and cut off the evil from those fearful places. Okay, and thus it is written when the morning stars sang together, because that's what song is. The song of the morning stars consists of Zemirot that are chanted in the morning service. These Psalms have the power to disperse and enfeeble all the B'nai Elohim, the harsh masters of judgment. Therefore, a man must concentrate during his prayer and direct his thoughts properly so that his prayer will not be hindered and his requests return unanswered, as it is written. Right? A man must examine himself. If he's able to pray, he should pray. If he's unable to pray, he shouldn't pray. That's not the halacha, by the way, even though it is written, brought down even in the Rambam. Okay, in other words, you have to check yourself out. Do you have the headspace? Are you ready? You're going to the king's palace. Did you prepare for this? You get to be in front of the king. Are you prepared? Are you mentally prepared? Sometimes people don't have the mental focus, whatever they've been doing. So, you know, uh, however, these days, regardless. Of so, the idea really is that these things are gonna clear the path. Now here comes the, the crunch here. I'm so glad we're in time here, Howard, with, for you, okay? I appreciate it. So that's how to approach God. And you have to be properly prepared. And thank God we have King David who made these zmirot that do the mazamir that are gonna cut external forces and external motivations out, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you have been informed that the essence of faith and the basis for understanding the unity of God is to understand the applications for each name. For all his names that are mentioned in the Torah are included in what we call the yud ke vav -ke, the Tetragrammaton, okay? The four-letter name of God that we do not mention, okay? We really say it's called, yud ke vav -ke is called the tree trunk, okay? If you look at your chart, you'll see actually yud ke vav -ke really is number six, okay? It's also number three, okay, but it's a, I'll, I'll, we'll get into the details of how the pronunciation is. But you'll see number one, which is the highest, usually associated with Keter, is, is the name of Ekye Asher Ekye, okay? That's a higher name. Wait a minute. If, I, if you, everything is coming from Yudke Vavke, and that is the root of every, all of existence, how come it's number six and not number one? So he answered earlier in the introduction, he said that, you, you, number one, Ekye is called the root of it. But the, the tree, the trunk of the tree, which all the branches come from, is really all Yudke Vavke. Everything for us, in terms of what we, how we relate, is all through that, okay? A tree trunk. Each of the other names that you even see in our array that we have, those of which I've compared to roots and branches and other hidden treasures, has a unique function. Every name has a unique function. Mm -hmm. And here's how he brings it. It is like a storehouse, which has several rooms. Each room within the storehouse has a specific identity. One room has precious gems, one has silver, another has gold, while another has different kinds of food, and another has drinks. If a person needs food, he may starve to death if he doesn't know how to get to the room. Even though the rooms are full, right? Even though the rooms are full, if he doesn't know how to get to it. It is not because his request has been denied. I keep asking. I don't understand. I keep asking and I'm not answered. He is simply not aware of which room he needs. So it is with the comprehension of the blessed holy names. There are names in charge of prayer, mercy, and forgiveness, while others are in charge of tears and sadness, injury and tribulations, sustenance and income, or heroism, loving kindness, grace, and I'll add healing. Okay? 
a certain name is required for healing. If you're calling the wrong name, I'm sorry, I, I, are you speaking to me? Right? <laughs> right? My name is George. Excuse me, you, you, you called me George. Okay? So you'll refer to me as George. Okay? So, you know, wrong room, wrong name, wrong room. Okay? You want X? Don't go to room Y asking for X. Okay? It's, good, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You just got to know which room to go to, which door to knock on. Okay? If one does not know how to concentrate on the very name, which is the key to the answer of his request, then who's to blame? Who's to blame? This is an amazing thing that he's going to say right now. Who's to blame if the request is not granted? So sad that we have to say this. It is his own foolishness and ignorance, as it is written. And the next page says, right? A man's, oh, it's not clear, but good luck with all that. A man's folly subverts his ways and his heart rages against yud ke vav -ke, okay? I just want to find it in Hebrew one second, okay? Okay, yeah. One second, yeah. Vim eno yodea liskaven betfilas of also shame, shuhu mefateach, shumafteach. Lama shuhutsarich mi garam lo shalo ya pikratsano. So we say it's his own foolishness. This is the verse, I just have to say it in Hebrew because it's always much more richer. Iveles adam tisalef darko ve'al Hashem yiza'af libo. A man, right, perverts his ways and then he gets mad at God for not answering him. Right? Unbelievable. For God is open to everyone. It is the foolishness of the man that is to blame. Wow, how can you blame us? We're just it's so ignorant. We don't know. How can, you, how can he get on our case for this, right? But it seems like, man, he's basically saying, well, I, think, I guess you got to learn, okay? The one who does not know to which room he should go and therefore returns empty-handed, yet man thinks the evil, this evil thought, that God thwarted him from getting what he needed. This, however, is not the truth, for his own foolishness has let him down. As it is written, in your iniquities that have diverted these things, your sins have withheld the bounty from you. And it could be a person's sins also it did cause him not to go to the right door, not to go to the right room, okay? You need a lot of siyata de shumaya, which means help from heaven, okay? One must therefore familiarize oneself with the ways of the Torah and know the purpose of the holy names. He should be expert in them, and when he needs the re to request something from God, he should concentrate on the name designated to handle that question. If he does so, then not only will his request be granted, but he will be loved in the heavens and be loved in the world. He will merit both this world and the next. What a bargain, okay? What a bargain. Now that you have been given these principles, use them as a basis for what we, with God's help, are about to explain, the elucidation of the purpose of each of the holy names that are written in the Torah. Be astutely aware that the first name, now he's going to talk about the name. Now we're going to talk about our subject right now, which I'm, I don't know if we'll get finish it today, okay? but just to get a little glimpse of what is this name, okay? The name of Adenut, number one, okay? The entrance into the palace. You cannot get in without this, okay? So he's going to start to give a little, and here you're going to understand as we're going to read this going, yeah, I see why the rabbi said don't buy the book, okay? Because it's like it needs intense study, okay? We're just getting a little taste of it here, okay? Be astutely aware that the first name is the name closest to all those who have been created. Without it, there's no way for any creature to enter the court of the king. 
and this name is Adanut. Okay? I know you stated that in the beginning. Why do you say that as opposed to... What? Why do you say Adanut instead? Oh, because, because I don't want to... Oh, sorry. I, something I didn't tell you at preface also. Oh, yeah. We're not allowed to take God's name in vain. Okay. Right? So, so, so I God. prefer not to say the God's... I come from really old school, and I'm Bali Chuva, yeah. which means I wasn't religious. So when I came to Yeshiva, we were very warned, very emphatically, don't mess. So even though there are, there are some people who feel comfortable saying this name as it is pronounced, as it's written here, and they're saying it's just, you know, whatever. I don't know what school they come from. I'm not comfortable, so I'm going to do what's comfortable for me, okay? So It just makes sense because every blessing begins with saying that name. Yes, well, yeah, right. when you say so, it, you right. pronounce it. Okay, yeah, one second. I mean, every blessing that you start, at least the ones that I know, all say that. They right. Say they don't say Hashem? No. Uh, you know, you know, Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. One second. Whoa! Your honor, are you are you're already on step eight? Okay. You're already. Uh, oh, we go. Okay. Sorry, I had to plug it in because I was losing power. We're losing power, Captain. Okay. Our delithium crystals are at ten percent. <laughs> okay. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah. I'm old school. I prefer not to. I'm more comfortable with it, even though I know some scholars will laugh at me and mock at me. But I know this is the school I come from, and I prefer to be in the safe zone. Okay? Of course, when I'm praying, or when you're saying a whole verse, if you're saying a whole verse in Tehillim or Torah, you can say it. It was a big question. We had a mitzvah of we say twice. We have, we have a, the, the, the halacha in the Torah is you have to say Shtaim uh, Mikravecha Targum and finish with the community every week. In other words, you have to do the Parsha. You have to read twice in the Hebrew, once in the Aramaic. The men do this. It's a mitzvah in the Torah to do this. Okay. By the way, they know the whole Torah is one name of God. You know that, right? The whole Torah, first letter to last letter, one long revelation. They say whoever does this reads twice in the in the Hebrew one, once in the Aramaic, and finishes with the Parsha, ticket for long life, okay? Because you're saying it over, even though you don't even understand it. Anyways, when we first started saying it, we, we don't know if we're allowed to say God's name, because we're like kind of learning Torah, right, as we're doing it, and, he, and the rabbi says, of course, you say the whole verse, of course you could say the name, as you say the verses, okay? So, here we go. The ineffable name Yud Kei Vav Kei is the one that teaches us Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, there was a little point I a little skipped over, a little a nuance here. Just that paragraph again. Be astutely aware that the first name is the name closest to all those who have been created, meaning us. The gate, the first gate, that's it. That's why he started this first, okay? Shar Aleph, gate one. Without it, there's no way for any creature to enter the court of the king. You need this, okay? The ineffable name of Yudke Vavke is the one that teaches us the essence of our blessed creator, and everything is subordinate to it. But the name of Adonut is the key to the entrance through the first gate. This name is the lowest level of God's names. It is the uttermost foundation of unity, as we will explain with God's help. After which comes, uh, after which comes the other world, the world outside the divine hierarchy. The essential and true understanding of the verse here. Here, interestingly enough, where does he? Where now? Where is he going? That's the question. Is the essential and true understanding of the verse? A river issues from Eden to water the garden, and then it divides and becomes four branches. Now, what is he going to say about this? Everybody reads about the rivers in the Garden of Eden. Very nice. Okay, river, four branches. Oh, man, the esoteric texts just go wild on that. Okay? I'm telling you, the Zohar and all the things, it's not talking about a literal river. Okay? The river that comes out of the garden. Okay? 
is the rivers, so there's a missing something, is, the, is that the rivers represent the four divisions of the Shekhinah, which are subordinate to Aleph, Dalid, Nun, and Yud, which is the lowest level of the divine oneness. The name of Adenut is like a storehouse for the abundance and the emanations of all the different entities which draw their sustenance from Yud Kevavke, that's the higher name of God, through the network of channels where one finds the three names arranged in order Adonut below, Yud Kevavke in the middle, and Ekye above. So now, if you go to your chart here, you're going to see, go to the page, and you'll see, okay, not number nine, but you have number 10, number six, and number one. 10 is Adonut. Six is Yudke Vavke, and above that is Ekye. Okay? I will be what I will be. That's how it translates to. The name of number one, Ekye, by the way, that was the name that was revealed to Moshe at the burning bush. Right? When, I, when Moshe says, what am I going to tell them? Are they not going to believe me? This was the name. I will be with them. Okay? It's an unbelievable name. We'll get to the real deep understanding of it. And then, of course, there's Yudke Vavke, which is really... The, the main place where everything, everything is going to come from and everything branches out to. We look at it as a branch, a tree trunk, and we look at it as branches, okay? So here what he's saying though, here, let me go back to where I am before if I can find it. Okay. No. Okay. So this name of Adonut is like a storehouse. For the abundance of the emanations of all the different entities which draw their sustenance from Yudke Vavke, that's everybody gets from Yudke Vavke, through the network of channels where one finds the three names arranged in order, that's the ten spherot that we just said, from the name of Ekye comes an abundance of emanations from the source known as Ein Sof. As we look in, the, in your chart, if you know, if you ha maybe you should rip it out so you can have it in front of you. Ain Sof is what is above number one. Okay? Ain Sof means no end. Right? Infinite. There's no end. Okay? It's the highest, one of the greatest, you know, uh, it's a revelation of the existence of God that is a mila shlili. It is a negation word. That means no end. Okay? Complete unlimitation. So really, everything, if we look at it, flows from above number one, and it comes down to number one, and it's going to flow through all of these channels, like a river. Ooh, it's hard to read, right? I'm trying. No end. Which funnel through the different levels until they reach the blessed Yudke Vavke. And from Yudke Vavke, they throw, flow through the channels until they reach the name of Adanut. Which is where all the what is what, anybody can read that strategies. strategies of the king are found, for he sus, he sustains all through the power of Yudke Vavke within him. All who wish to enter and leave and cleave to Yudke Vavke must enter and leave by by the word of Adanut. Therefore, this name is the storehouse for the treasuries of God, and is the shrine where Yudke Vavke dwells. This is the reason that Yudke Vavke is always pronounced in the Torah as, well, how we pronounce it. Don't forget, who decided? Remember, it's written Yudke Vavke in the Torah. And yet, we have a tradition, when you see that, you're not going to say it as it is written. You have to say something else. Of all the things to say, who picked to say this one, right? Was there a board meeting that I wasn't invited to? Should I take this with me? You, yeah, do we have to leave these? You know something? If you can take it back, come, if you're going to come next week and bring it. Okay. Oh, yeah. If you're not going to bring it, shame on you. Okay. In other words, anyone who wishes to seek Yudke Vavke will find him in the name of Adonut. Since this is so, since this is so, you need to know that there are 54 quadrilateral, quadrilateral, quadrilateral names connected to Yudke Vavke, which add up to 200 and. 16 letters, okay? The 216 letter name of God, would you believe it? There's a 216 letter name of God. Um, if you, where these, you know, and it's really comes, stems from the, from the 72. It's a little complicated for me to get to right now, but 
just to say, if you go, uh, there was a movie that came out a long time ago called Pie. Everybody saw it? Everybody saw it. It was in black and white, right? It was about this unbelievable expert mathematician. You remember? He was a, and they, and there's some people hired him. They, he, they were trying to figure out, he was, he was trying to figure out the, the stock market the code to the stock market, the fluctuation so you can predict it. And then Minus, so he, so he developed something and it came out a 216 permutation, letter permutation or, or number permutation. And then the holy people, the rabbis basically kidnapped him because they wanted it because they wanted it to bring the redemption and get the Kongadol back into the Holy of Holies. So he had two kinds of people after him. He was being chased by the rabbi by crazy rabbis, okay? And he was being chased by the stock market people, right? In the end, he destroyed the name and then he had to do an operation on his own brain. He did something to his brain that he would forget it, okay? Because it was a very... But anyways, I, they got it from somewhere, the 216 letter name of God, which we'll investigate, okay? Well, okay, these 54... These 54 names contain the secret for drawing from the power of all that exists in the world. They are like the soul of the 216 letters which are contained in the verses of Exodus. Everything created is included in this. Uh, we won't go through those. I'll, we'll introduce those sukim later. Everything created is included in these 54 names. And these names are the means for fulfilling the needs of every creature through the intercession of Adonut. So you see that the letters that comprise of Adonut teach us about his essence and his dominion. Okay? So I'm not going to get into his example. Okay? Right now, we'll stop right now, okay? Because I wanted to get into the next page, but I'll do that next in Yerz Hashem next time, okay? But the idea really here, here is when we we have a lot of names. I've just thrown at you a lot of things, but the one thing is very interesting is thank God, right? We have the Torah and we have these holy rabbis who are going to hand us the idea or tools why these names are used for this specific thing. And we have now been awakened to the idea of storage, storage places, right? Rooms, which have different things in them. And the names, of course, the names of God, of course, are the ones, the names that have access to those different things that we want. For example, the word kale. Kale, and you look in your array here, right? Which one is kale? Kale number four, right? Kale is associated with healing. Okay, that is the name for healing. How do we know that? There's a lot of other sources, but just simply the source for healing is when Moshe Rabbeinu, when, when, when the whole incident with Miriam, when she was sick and she had saras, she had this leprosy, and Aaron was there, he pronounced it, and said, Moshe, you got to pray for her. And Moshe said, what, how many words? Kael, na, rafa, na, la, five words. But he started with the word kale. Kael, na, Almighty, please heal her. Okay? Rafanala. They say it all the time in the synagogues when they make the Mishabera. Not in the Ashkenaz, but the Svartim do. Right? They say, when they make a Mishabera, they always say, Kel na Rafana lehem, or Kel na Rafana lo. Okay? They always use this. So just to tell you that there are, you know, like he said, there's a palace, there's many rooms. And God, thank God, to get access to know which thing that you want, there's names that are appropriate to, to those different things that we want. Yeah, we'll stop so now.